Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and this is the CTTechJunkie.com podcast and I've been getting a lot of questions from people about how do we communicate privately in this age of NSA surveillance and all this, uh, all these crazy government tools that can literally spy on what we're communicating with our friends and family and uh, there haven't been many easy to use ways to encrypt our private communications uh, in order to make it a little bit harder for government uh, spies to uh, take a look at what we're doing. And it's funny, if I was making this podcast a year ago, people would think I'm nuts, but now uh, these tools are becoming more and more prevalent. And I think we're gonna see some uh, real innovation in the, the private communication space over the next year or two in the wake of all these uh, NSA revelations. And I wanted to show you something called Mailvelope because I, I haven't really found up until now a very easy way uh, to encrypt mail that you're sending on a, on a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or something like that. And the Mailvelope people have really come up with something kind of neat. And what this is is a uh, plug-in for the Chrome browser. So right now it's just for Chrome, but there will be some other ones coming soon. And it uses a technology called PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy. It's been around uh, since the early 90s. It's, uh, this particular version of PGP is open source. So it's been vetted. People have been really hammering it, trying to make sure that there's no back doors or easy ways for people to uh, circumvent the encryption that you're going to create. And it's, it's pretty solid. And what uh, Mailvelope does is it takes that standard, that open source standard, and makes it into a uh, web plugin, essentially, for Chrome that allows you uh, to integrate it with Gmail and other things. And the key about PGP is its keys, in that uh, your encryption is happening before your message gets out on the internet. And that's the key, because if the government can pick up something or if you're encrypting on Google's site, they can go subpoena Google for its encryption keys. But if you're generating the keys on your own computer, short of issuing a search warrant to you, uh, they're not going to be able to get at what you have uh, encrypted with your, with your encryption keys. So we're gonna take a look at Mailvelope and kind of walk you through the process. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to mailvelope.com. This is an open source project, so it is a free project. Uh, and you have to go to the Chrome store to install it. And uh, what you do is just uh, click the Add to Chrome button and you are up and running. So the first thing you need to do is create uh, keys for your account. And what keys are, are basically kind of the, uh, the, the encryption uh, instructions that you're going to send to your recipient, mess uh, the recipient of your messages. So you see when I go into the Mailvelope options, uh, I have a, uh, what's called a key ring. And what these are, are the people that I communicate with. And right now I only communicate with my, myself encrypted, unfortunately, but um, hopefully after you watch this video, there'll be a few more folks in, uh, communicating in, with encrypted communications. And before you do anything, you have to generate a key for yourself because what's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna basically send a public key to the people that we're talking to. Uh, and that is going to allow them to encrypt messages to us. So uh, the first step you're gonna do is go to this generate key function and we're gonna type in uh, the name of the owner. So I'll just put my name in here. And I also wanna say um, my address, salontechjunkie at gmail.com. And I want you to click the advanced button here. And the reason why is we're gonna be overly paranoid and we're gonna crank up our key size to 2048 bits. Now, this is a lot, um, but you know, 15, 18 years ago when the internet was first getting started, a lot of the keys that were made back then for PGP and other encryption systems are now much, much easier to crack now that we're in this uh, modern era of super fast PCs. So you kind of want to stay as far ahead of the curve as you can. And 2048 right now is considered to be a pretty uh, hard to crack kind of number. And I'll show you what you get uh, and what that 2048 means in a minute. Um, we're just going to, in this case, uh, never expire it, but you can uh, set expiration dates to these keys so that the uh, things stop working there. The other thing that it's going to ask me for is a passphrase. So I need to, it wants me to actually encrypt my, um, my encryption key with a, another password. So just make sure that they match up. So we'll type that in there and we'll hit submit. And now what it's going to do is generate a key. And this takes a while because it's doing a lot of random number calculation. It needs to make something as random as possible so that it's harder uh, to guess what the key is. So we're going to submit this. And I think, oh, I think we're good. So now what we're going to do is go over to our display keys. And now uh, you see that my lontechjunkie.com at gmail.com has a key. And you see there's two keys here because this means I have a public and a private key. All right, we've created now two keys in this process. The first is the private key, and that needs to stay private. It needs to stay on your computer and never leave it, or you can back it up, but back it up to something like a flash drive or something like that. 
because you don't want that to get out on the internet at all. And uh, the reason is, is that even though you've protected it with a password, uh, that password is not as secure as the key itself. So if somebody were to be able to brute force your password, which is a lot shorter than the 2048-bit uh, key that we just created, uh, they could still be able to um, very easily hack into your encrypted communications. And I know this sounds a little paranoid, but remember, you're dealing with uh, state-run agencies that have a lot of resources behind them to uh, crack passwords. So create that private key. I'll show you how to back it up, but don't put that out on the internet. The nice thing about Mailvelope is that it stores all of its keys on the local computer and it doesn't transmit them elsewhere. So that's a good thing in, in, in as far as encryption is concerned, but it's a bad thing if your hard drive ever crashes. So we'll make a backup of that. The second key is the public key. And the public key is what you share with other people. And what's great about how this system works is that uh, someone can encrypt something using your public key to send to you, and only your private key is the way to decrypt it. So you can kind of think of uh, you know, maybe the, the, the public key as the, uh, the master lock and your private key is the key that actually pops it open. And that's really the beauty of how this system works is that you can share uh, your public key with anyone. You can put it on your website. You can email it out in plain text. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what really matters is that private key and keeping everything secure. So let's see how that whole system works. So we'll go back to our key ring. And here is the key that we created. This is a key pair. We have a public key and a private key. And what we want to do is let people know that we actually have a public key to share so that they can encrypt stuff and send it to us. So we're going to click the export button here. And we have some options, but I will say just go to display public key. And this is it. And this is what people will use to uh, send encryption, encrypted communications to us. And this is safe to display out in the wild. In fact, you could email this to people. It doesn't matter because this is kind of a one-way ticket in that uh, with the public key, people can encrypt things to you. Uh, but they can't decrypt it unless they have your private key. Again, this is why it's important to keep the private key private because that's kind of the, the whole key to uh, unlocking what someone's going to send you. So um, we're going to take this public key and we could email it to somebody, but what I'm going to do is go over to the MIT PGP key server and I'm going to go put it in there. So uh, it's at pgp.mit.edu, port number 11371. Again, this is still a little computer geeky, but uh, it is something pretty helpful to uh, be able to have people find you. And there's other PGP tools that look to this directory so they can find you to email you. So I'm just going to paste that PGP block in there. And then I'm going to go over to submit this key to the key server. And it added it. That's it. So if I went back to the MIT thing to search it, and I just search uh, for my name, um, I should, here I am. And here's lontechjunkie at gmail.com. And you could even give out this link here um, to other people. I, I put it in as like an email signature that if you want to you know, communicate with me privately, uh, click on this link and you'll get my, my public key. And this is compatible across a whole bunch of different PGP apps, not just Mailvelope. There's a whole bunch of other stuff which we'll cover in future episodes uh, that you can use with your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device, Windows, Mac. There's a whole bunch of different ways to uh, use this encryption system. So, um, so we have it up there on the public key server. And now what we're going to do is hop over to our email system here, and we're going to send myself an email. So we're going to go here, and I'm going to compose a message. Now, um, let me zoom out and just go over to the right spot here. Uh, zoom a little bit further, move this over here. So we'll zoom into our message, and you notice this thing just popped up. And this is what Mailvelope does: is that it puts a um, a little overlay when you're typing an email to somebody. Uh, and what that will do is allow us to type in an encrypted message that Google doesn't get. Because remember, once you start typing in here, um, it will save it to Google's server, and now it's retrievable by a government agency, presumably. So um, we'll just say, hello, this is, this is an encrypted message. And what we're going to do is click the New button here. And you'll see now that it's pulled up a whole different editor. And this is be being edited locally now on this computer. So everything I type in here is not getting saved as a draft up in Google's uh, headquarters there. It's staying uh, just on my computer locally. So uh, it's presumably not uh, going to send this unencrypted text that I will be typing in uh, unencrypted back to the Google servers. So now we're going to type in an encrypted message. And then you see the lock here. Because if I just do transfer now, it's just going to uh, give me a warning here saying, hey, you didn't, uh, you didn't encrypt this yet. So we're going to go to the lock here. And what we're going to do is pick who in our keychain we're going to send this email to. So I'm going to uh, pick my, you know, I'll do, I'll do my me.com address. We have a Mac version there. So um, we'll say that. We'll click the Add button. 
And I could add multiple people here also, and they would, it would encrypt it separately for each of their private public keys so that um, if I send it to two different people, uh, even though they're getting the same message, they have to use their own encryption keys to decrypt it. So um, little, another little safeguard there. So I'll hit OK. And now you see that little string of text we had written got turned into this gibberish. And it looks a lot like the, uh, the keys that I showed you before because it's, again, this is an encrypted thing. So we'll hit that. And now what it's doing is it's placing that encrypted text into the message that I am sending to myself. I'm just going to change the address here to my me.com address. And I'm going to click the send button. Okay, so we typed the message in, we encrypted it, we sent it off to uh, the me.com address. And uh, on the other end, if someone was just looking at your account, uh, you know, like a, a spy at the government or someone else, um, all they would see is this gibberish coming through here. This is the message that we sent. Uh, and without your private key, they would have no way of decrypting that. Now, the important thing to note here is that um, things that, that involve the metadata, the things that the NSA looks at a lot, which is, you know, who's communicating to whom, uh, encrypting your, the content of your message doesn't get you away from uh, this notion of people tracking who you're talking to. So you may have to come up with some other means of, of trying to, to change that, at least if you don't want you know, the government to know who you're talking to. But in many ways, this likens uh, you know, the U.S. mail where you have an envelope and the government is photographing the envelopes but not the content inside of them. So um, the content of the message is encrypted and protected, um, but those headers are still being sent uh, in the clear just because that's how email tends to work. So now if we wanted to decrypt the message, we would need uh, to have our private key in-house. In and uh, the way we're going to do that here, I'm just going to go into my, my Gmail account um, that I set up here. And if I look at the message here, you'll notice that um, this uh, icon pops up here that says, hey, detected a uh, PGP message. And if I hit this and type in my password for the me.com account, uh, it'll go in and decrypt that. What's interesting is, is that if you don't have the private key, you can't even decrypt the message you sent. It's that secure. So um, just keep all of those things in mind when you send these messages off to people that um, you may not be able to look at it again after it gets uh, delivered. So now, uh, what I would do is if you wanted to go and send a message to somebody, you're going to need to have them send your, their key to you, your, their public key to you so that you can load them in uh, into your directory. So we're going to take a look now uh, and, and add a, a few more keys to our account so we can communicate with more people. So we're going to grab a public key off of someone's website. And this is Leo Laporte. He's a technology podcaster, quite popular amongst us geeks. And what he's done on his homepage is basically linked to his public key. So we're going to click on this. And it's going to take us back to that MIT server. So uh, he's put it up there just like we did. And we can just go ahead and grab uh, this. You could also download the file, but we'll just uh, grab it and just show you how it works. You can see his key is a lot longer than the one we made uh, because his key is, uh, I think, a 4,096 block key. So he's, his key size is double the size that we made. And that, again, that's if you want to be really super secure, uh, make your key as big as you want to make it. So uh, we're going to pop back to our settings here for Mailvelope, and we're going to go to Import Keys. And all we're going to do here is just paste that in. So all that text we just grabbed from the website, we pasted it in there. We hit Submit. And it says, Success, Leo Laporte's uh, key is in there. So now if we wanted to send Leo Laporte an email, uh, we go back to our Email Compose button here. And uh, we'll just type in a, a, an email to Leo Laporte. And I think it's uh, leo at leoville.tv. I don't have him built on this account yet. Uh, and we'll say, uh, Testing. Email. By the way, if you send him an email, he will respond to you and say that he got it. So uh, he's been really uh, cool about spreading this technology. So we'll click this like we did before. And if we go over here, we'll see now that uh, Leo Laporte is showing up in our list of keys. We'll hit that, hit OK. And now we've, again, encrypted a message that uh, he'll be able to look at. Now, one last thing we want to do is just back up that private key so that we don't um, lose all the encrypted messages that we get if we have a hard drive crash. And all you do is select the, the key pair, click Export, and then go to either the key pair, which is what I would suggest you do, or just go to Display Private Key. And that'll give you the ability to copy and paste that off into an ASCII text file or something that uh, you can store somewhere. But just make sure you store that file locally. Put it on a, a flash drive or burn it to a CD or whatever. Put it on a floppy drive even. You can put it on an old floppy disk. Um, it's a very small file. But if uh, you were to store it on Dropbox or in Google Drive or something, that is a subpoenable piece of uh, data that the government could presumably go after if they, if they wanted to. 
Um, so what I would do, again, is store it locally, make sure nobody else has access to that file, and you should be good to go. So that's Mailvelope. It's a really easy way to get into PGP encryption. Uh, there are desktop tools and tools from mobile that um, each have their own way of approaching the, uh, the PGP encryption, but uh, the keys work across all of those platforms. Uh, it is a really neat system and very, very secure. This is Lon Seibin for the CTTechJunkie.com podcast. Thanks for watching.